Chapter 1, The Unlikely Roommate Quest Miami Beach. The very name conjures up images of sun-soaked shores, vibrant nightlife, and a pulsating energy that seems to dance in the air. It was supposed to be my paradise, a haven where I could build a life in the sun. Little did I know that my grand vision would be subject to the harsh reality of a tight budget. As I stared at the classifieds, the glaring truth confronted me, I needed an apartment, and my wallet was playing a game of hide-and-seek. I sighed, realizing that my dream of a solo sanctuary was slipping away like sand through my fingers. Miami Beach wasn't going to be my playground, it was going to be a battleground for my budget. Resigned to the inevitable compromise, I decided to embark on the daunting mission of finding a place that wouldn't bankrupt me. Sharing an apartment with someone else was the bitter pill I had to swallow, the compromise I had to make to stay afloat in this city of dreams. Chapter 2, The Classified Odyssey Armed with Determination and a List of Classified Ads, I delved into the labyrinth of Miami's rental market. My eyes scanned through the descriptions, each line feeling like a potential compromise. Cozy shared apartment near the beach, one ad beckoned, hiding the reality between the lines. Cozy meant cramped, and shared meant a stranger in your personal space. My phone buzzed with responses as I fired off inquiries, each message a hesitant plea for information. Hi there, is the room still available? What's the monthly rent? I typed, trying to sound like a seasoned apartment hunter rather than a budget-strapped dreamer. The replies trickled in, each one revealing a piece of the puzzle. Some were too expensive, while others seemed to be in neighborhoods where I'd need a compass to find my way back. But then, there it was, an ad that seemed almost too good to be true. Affordable room in shared apartment, steps from the ocean. As I read those words, hope flickered like a distant lighthouse in the dark. I dialed the number, my heart pounding with a mix of anticipation and anxiety. A voice on the other end confirmed that the room was available. We scheduled a meeting, and suddenly, my quest for an apartment turned into a journey to meet my potential cohabitant. Chapter 3, The Apartment Rendezvous The appointed day arrived, and I found myself standing in front of a pastel-colored building that seemed to have witnessed the ebb and flow of countless dreams. As I knocked on the door, the creaking sound echoed my nervous heartbeat. The door swung open to reveal my potential roommate, Maria, a cheerful woman with a warm smile that put my apprehensions at ease. The apartment, though modest, had a certain charm. Sunlight streamed through the windows, casting a hopeful glow on the worn-out furniture and mismatched decor. We engaged in the customary dance of polite conversation, discussing our respective lives, interests, and the unspoken rules of sharing a space. Maria's laughter filled the air as we navigated the delicate balance of establishing boundaries while trying to find common ground. As we toured the apartment, Maria pointed out the quirks and charms, the noisy fridge that had a habit of humming at odd hours, the creaky floorboard near the entrance, and the window with a view that promised both sunrise. Chapter 4, The Art of Compromise As the conversation flowed, it became clear that sharing an apartment wasn't just a practical arrangement, it was an art of compromise. Maria, it seemed, was as hesitant about a new roommate as I was. Yet, in the dance of our words and shared laughter, a silent agreement emerged, an understanding that in this shared space, compromise would be the cornerstone. We discussed schedules, preferences, and the unspoken codes of roommate etiquette. The initial awkwardness gave way to a tentative camaraderie, like two sailors on a ship learning to navigate the same sea. As the meeting concluded, I found myself at a crossroads, weighing the practicality of the arrangement against the yearning for solitary independence. The decision loomed large, and as I stepped out into the Miami sunlight, I wondered if this compromise would be the key to unlocking my dream of living in this vibrant city. Chapter 5. The decision back in the familiar confines of my current temporary lodgings, I pondered the pros and cons of the shared apartment. The hum of the city outside seemed to echo the rhythm of my thoughts. On one hand, there was the promise of affordability, proximity to the beach, and the potential for a shared adventure in this urban jungle. On the other, the specter of compromise loomed large, 
the surrender of personal space, the negotiation of habits, and the uncertain dance of living with a virtual stranger. As the sun dipped below the Miami skyline, I reached a decision. The compromise, it seemed, was a necessary detour on the road to my dreams. With a mixture of trepidation and hope, I picked up my phone to confirm my decision, to embrace the shared apartment, the unpredictable adventure that awaited, and the unpredictable partner in this dance called life. Chapter 6. The search continues the weeks past like a montage of apartment visits and fleeting hopes. I wandered through units that felt more like transient stops than potential homes. The fluorescent lights of sterile kitchens, the hollow echoes of empty rooms, they all blended into a disheartening collage. My weariness grew, and my initial optimism began to wane. Yet, amid the disheartening sea of mundane possibilities, there lingered a memory, a place that had caught my attention. It was an apartment with character, a space that hinted at the potential for warmth and comfort. The catch? The landlord lived there too, and he happened to be a gay man. Chapter 7. The echoes of prejudice as I hesitated, torn between the allure of the appealing apartment and my apprehensions about the landlord, I grappled with an unexpected internal conflict. Why did the landlord's sexual orientation even matter? The echoes of ingrained prejudices resurfaced, and I found myself questioning societal norms that had no bearing on the quality of a living space. Aware of the unfair bias clouding my judgment, I decided to confront my own preconceptions. The apartment was still a potential haven, and it deserved a fair chance. With renewed resolve, I arranged to revisit the place, determined to let the substance of the living arrangement outweigh any lingering biases. Chapter 8. A welcoming space upon returning to the apartment, I discovered that my initial impression hadn't misled me. The space exuded a rare charm, with warm hues, eclectic decor, and a sense of homeliness that felt like a comforting embrace. The landlord, a gracious man with a genuine smile, welcomed me as if I were an old friend. As we toured the apartment once again, my reservations began to dissolve. The landlord's presence felt more like an assurance than a hindrance. His genuine enthusiasm about creating a harmonious living environment resonated, and the walls seemed to whisper stories of camaraderie and acceptance. Chapter 9. Breaking down walls in the days that followed, I wrestled with the internal walls I had built. It was time to confront my own biases and challenge the societal constructs that had seeped into my psyche. The landlord's sexual orientation, I realized, was irrelevant to the essence of our potential living arrangement. What mattered was the shared respect for personal space, a commitment to open communication, and the genuine desire to create a home for two strangers on intersecting journeys. I grappled with my own growth, navigating the uncharted territory of self-awareness and dismantling the barriers that had clouded my judgment. It was a journey of introspection, and with each step, I felt a greater sense of liberation. Chapter 10. Embracing diversity with newfound clarity and a more expansive worldview, I made a conscious choice to embrace the diverse spectrum of human experiences. The shared apartment, once clouded by unwarranted concerns, now represented an opportunity for personal growth and mutual understanding. As I communicated my decision to the landlord, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. The apartment, with its vibrant walls and welcoming atmosphere, awaited a new chapter, a chapter that transcended the superficial boundaries of preconceived notions. With a renewed spirit, I embarked on the journey of shared living, ready to learn, adapt, and, most importantly, to embrace the rich tapestry of experiences that life on Miami Beach had to offer. The apartment, once a mere space, now stood as a testament to the transformative power of openness and the beauty that unfolds when we choose acceptance over prejudice. Chapter 11. The Grand Abode The day finally arrived when I moved into the sprawling Miami Beach apartment. The one with six rooms, four bathrooms, a colossal kitchen, an expansive balcony, and a living room that felt like a sanctuary. The promise of building amenities added an extra layer of luxury to the experience. Excitement and trepidation danced in my chest as I unpacked my belongings, ready to embark on this new chapter of shared living. Chapter 12. 
Awkward beginnings The initial days in the grand apartment were marked by a flurry of introductions and warm welcomes. The landlord and the other tenants, all of whom shared a commonality that I found myself fixating on, extended kindness and camaraderie. However, beneath the surface, a subtle awkwardness lingered. I felt like an outsider at times, navigating the unspoken nuances of a shared space where my experiences differed from those around me. Chapter 13. The cozy living room The heart of the apartment was undoubtedly the living room, a space that exuded warmth and comfort. As I ventured into shared movie nights, laughter-filled gatherings, and moments of shared silence, the coziness of the living room became a symbol of potential connections. Yet, amidst the laughter, a subtle unease persisted. Was it my own discomfort or a genuine undercurrent in the shared dynamics? Chapter 14. Whispers of dissimilarity As the days unfolded, I couldn't shake the feeling of being an outsider. While everyone was kind, their shared experiences created an unspoken camaraderie that I struggled to fully grasp. Late night conversations and shared jokes sometimes left me feeling like I was on the periphery, observing a world that, despite its openness, felt exclusive in its own way. The whispers of dissimilarity echoed in the silence of the expansive balcony, where I found solace in moments of contemplation. The Miami Beach skyline stretched before me, a metaphor for the vastness of the space between my reality and the shared experiences of those around me. Chapter 15 navigating uncharted waters as i navigated the uncharted waters of shared living i grappled with my own perceptions and the complexities of fitting into a community that shared a distinct bond the landlord and my fellow tenants continued to be gracious attempting to bridge the gaps with understanding and inclusivity yet the subtle dissonance lingered a decision loomed on the horizon whether to persist in this environment hoping to find my place amidst the similarities and differences or to acknowledge the discomfort and seek a space where my uniqueness could flourish without the weight of awkwardness. The grand apartment, with its six rooms and myriad shared spaces, held the promise of diverse connections and a tapestry of stories. Whether I would eventually carve out my niche in this intricate mosaic or seek a canvas where my colors could shine independently remained a question that only time would answer. The journey continued, each day a step closer to understanding the intricate dance of shared living on Miami Beach. Chapter 16. Unwanted Encounters The first few days in the grand apartment were marred by unexpected and unwelcome incidents. Craig, one of the tenants, seemed to have a unique interpretation of personal boundaries. His impromptu visit, shirtless and adorned in what could only be described as minimal attire, left me bewildered and uncomfortable within the confines of my own room. Chapter 17. A bathroom encounter, the second incident was even more unsettling. As I ventured into the shared bathroom, intended for both myself and another tenant, Joshua and Phil's intimate encounter unfolded before my eyes. Shocked and feeling like an intruder in my own living space, I retreated, leaving behind a door slightly ajar and a sense of violation that lingered in the air. Chapter 18. The weight of discomfort in the wake of these incidents, the weight of discomfort settled over me like an oppressive cloud. Apologies were extended, but the sense of violation persisted. The grand apartment, once a beacon of potential connections, now felt like a maze of awkward encounters and blurred boundaries. Chapter 19. Seeking resolution faced with the growing unease, I recognized the need to address the situation. A conversation with the landlord became imperative to restore a sense of balance and ensure that the shared space respected the rights and comfort of all its inhabitants. Summoning the courage to voice my concerns, I scheduled a meeting with the landlord, hoping for understanding, resolution, and a return to the promise of harmonious cohabitation. Chapter 20. Unveiling the conversation The meeting with the landlord unfolded in the living room, the symbolic heart of the grand apartment. I delicately broached the subject, explaining the discomfort I had experienced and the need for clearer boundaries. The landlord, understanding and empathetic, acknowledged the gravity of the situation and assured me that steps would be taken to ensure everyone's comfort. The conversation unveiled the complexities of shared living, the delicate dance of establishing guidelines, and the necessity of fostering an environment where everyone could feel secure and respected. 
As the discussion concluded, there was a glimmer of hope that the Grand Apartment, despite its initial hiccups, could still be a place where diverse lives intersected harmoniously. The journey continued, each day offering an opportunity for growth, understanding, and the forging of connections that would hopefully transform the Grand Apartment into the haven it was meant to be. Chapter 21 the uncomfortable conversation summoning the courage to address the discomfort, I sat down with Mr. Douglas, the landlord, to discuss the recent incidents that had left me feeling violated within the supposed sanctuary of the Grand Apartment. To my surprise, Mr. Douglas responded with a dismissive tone, suggesting that I was exaggerating and urging me to be more open-minded, flexible, and willing to embrace new adventures. Chapter 22, A Clear Stand Undeterred by Mr. Douglas's Lack of Understanding, I took a deep breath and asserted my position. I'm a straight man, Mr. Douglas, I declared, making it clear that my discomfort wasn't about being open-minded but about respecting personal boundaries. A moment of silence followed, a tension hanging in the air like an unresolved chord. Chapter 23, Promises in Silence After My Assertive Declaration, Mr. Douglas promised to address the situation. He assured me that he would speak to Joshua, Phil, and Craig, outlining the need for clearer boundaries within the shared living space. He mentioned that Craig would be advised to at least don a t-shirt before knocking on my door. As the conversation concluded, we shook hands, and Mr. Douglas offered a parting suggestion to relax a little bit. Chapter 24 Hopeful optimism leaving the conversation with a sense of hopeful optimism, I chose to believe that the dialogue with Mr. Douglas would bring about the desired changes. The grand apartment, with its potential for shared connections and understanding, could still become the haven I had envisioned. Chapter 25, Navigating Change In the days that followed, a palpable shift occurred within the grand apartment. Joshua and Phil, having been spoken to by Mr. Douglas, seemed more aware of the need for privacy and discretion. Craig, now adorned in more modest attire, knocked on my door with a newfound understanding of boundaries. While the air still carried echoes of past discomfort, there was a subtle transformation, a testament to the power of open communication. The grand apartment, once a tumultuous sea of awkward encounters, began to settle into a more harmonious rhythm paving the way for shared living experiences that respected the diverse narratives woven within its walls. As I navigated the changing tides, I held on to the hope that the initial hiccups were merely the ripples preceding a more tranquil phase in the grand apartment, a space where respect, understanding, and the coexistence of diverse stories could thrive. Chapter 26 a week of reprieve the week unfolded without any repeat of the discomfort that had characterized my initial days in the grand apartment. A sense of normalcy began to settle, as the shared living space became less of a battleground and more of a place where individual narratives coexisted, each with its own rhythm. Chapter 27 An in-spoken agreement though I could sense the occasional exchange of glances and eye rolls among the tenants, there was an unspoken agreement to maintain a respectful distance. No longer did I feel like an outsider within the confines of my own living space. The grand apartment, with its diverse inhabitants, seemed to be finding a balance where individualities could peacefully coexist. Chapter 28, The Approaching Christmas Celebration As Christmas approached, the festive spirit permeated the grand apartment. The tenants, led by Mackenzie's suggestion, decided to celebrate the occasion together. The prospect of shared joy and camaraderie loomed, and they extended an invitation for me to join the festivities. Chapter 29, A Tangled Web Caught Off Guard By The Invitation, I Hesitated. The holiday celebration presented an opportunity for shared warmth, but I needed to navigate the tangled web of my personal life. When questioned about joining, I replied that I had to talk with my girlfriend, Susan, before confirming my attendance. Chapter 30, Unwanted Questions The revelation of a girlfriend seemed to surprise my fellow tenant, Rob. You've got a girlfriend, Harry? He inquired, his curiosity evident. I chose not to meet his gaze, keeping my response ambiguous. Some aspects of my personal life were my own, 
and the intricate dance of relationships was not a topic I was willing to unravel within the confines of the grand apartment. As the Christmas celebration loomed, I found myself caught between the desire for shared camaraderie and the need to shield certain aspects of my life from unwanted scrutiny. The grand apartment, with its evolving dynamics, held the promise of both challenges and shared joys as the holiday season approached. Chapter 31. A conversation with Susan with the invitation to the Christmas celebration looming. I sat down with Susan to discuss the possibility of joining my fellow tenants in the grand apartment. Susan, ever understanding, expressed a desire to fly to Omaha to spend Christmas with her family and me. However, she added that if work commitments restrained me from joining, she was willing to explore the idea of joining the celebration in Miami Beach. Chapter 32, Weighing Options As Susan and I weighed our options, the complexities of the decision unraveled. The prospect of shared festivities with my fellow tenants held both allure and trepidation. I mulled over the idea of Susan stepping into the dynamic realm of the grand apartment, with its diverse inhabitants and the uncharted territories of shared living. Chapter 33, A Night of Unseen Encounters The previous night lingered in the recesses of my mind, a memory I chose not to share with Susan. The image of Rob, unexpectedly encountered in the kitchen, but naked, conversing on the phone with a beer in hand, was a spectacle that could potentially cast a shadow over the holiday celebration. I kept the incident to myself, aware that unveiling such encounters might complicate the festive atmosphere Susan envisioned. Chapter 34. A silent decision in the end, I chose not to divulge the unexpected encounter with Rob to Susan. Instead, I maintained the focus on the potential joy of shared celebrations and the festive spirit that permeated the grand apartment. The unspoken decision hung in the air, a deliberate choice to shield certain aspects of shared living and preserve the sanctity of the impending holiday gathering. Chapter 35, Anticipation and Reservations As the Christmas celebration approached, anticipation and reservations coexisted within me. The grand apartment, once a realm of discomfort, had transformed into a space where shared experiences were both complex and compelling. The upcoming holiday promised a tapestry of emotions, blending the warmth of festivities with the intricacies of navigating the uncharted territories of shared living. The grand apartment, with its evolving dynamics, held the key to a Christmas celebration that would either bridge the gaps or unravel the delicate threads woven within its walls. Chapter 36. The elevator encounter with only a week left until Christmas. Mackenzie and I found ourselves sharing the elevator from the lobby all the way up to the 11th floor. In an attempt to break the silence, Mackenzie decided to show me pictures from his childhood. I nodded, appreciating the effort to connect on a personal level. However, the atmosphere shifted when he proceeded to unveil a series of pictures from his days as an underwear model for a renowned brand. Chapter 37. Uncomfortable revelations as the elevator ascended, I found myself confronted with increasingly inappropriate images. The line between casual sharing and discomfort blurred, and I chose to maintain a stoic silence rather than acknowledge the discomfort that permeated the confined space. Mackenzie, seemingly unaware of the impact, continued the impromptu slideshow. Chapter 38, a tragic revelation two days later, as I prepared to leave for work, Mackenzie approached me with a somber expression. A good friend of mine has just passed away, he revealed, the weight of sorrow evident in his voice. Expressing my condolences, I remarked on the tragedy of a life cut short at only 36 years old. Chapter 39. A bizarre display in an unexpected turn, Mackenzie, seemingly searching for solace, opened his cell phone and thrust an image of the deceased friend into my line of sight. The picture, however, showcased the deceased man bare-chested, adding an uncomfortable layer to the already somber moment. Chapter 40. Drawing the line staring at the inappropriate image, I felt a surge of frustration. In that moment, I decided it was time to draw a clear line. I looked at Mackenzie, meeting his eyes with a stern expression, silently conveying that he had crossed a boundary. Without uttering a word, I made it clear that his attempts to engage me with inappropriate images were unwelcome and inappropriate. 
The encounter left a lingering tension in the air, a reminder that the Grand Apartment, despite its evolving dynamics, still harbored uncharted territories of discomfort. As Christmas approached, the delicate balance between shared festivities and individual boundaries remained in question, casting a shadow over the impending holiday celebration. Chapter 41, Unsettled Atmosphere As Christmas Unfolded in the Grand Apartment, Susan's discomfort became increasingly palpable. Despite my roommate's attempts to be friendly, she felt like an outsider, and the realization struck that a change was necessary for her peace of mind. Chapter 42, Unwelcome Revelations The dinner table, once a place of camaraderie, was now shrouded in an uneasy silence. In an attempt to respect Susan's presence, my roommates refrained from making inappropriate jokes. However, their relentless drinking continued, escalating the tension within the confined space. Chapter 43, a shocking turn after hours of boisterous festivities, the evening took a shocking turn. Joshua and Craig, fueled by alcohol and a seemingly collective disregard for boundaries, initiated a Christmas orgy. Susan, appalled by the unfolding scene, and I, flabbergasted by the sudden descent into chaos, found ourselves caught in a surreal nightmare. Chapter 44, A Call to Authorities Susan, unable to tolerate the escalating situation, took matters into her own hands. Distraught and angered, she called the police on Rob, who had crossed yet another line by attempting to caress her hair while oiling up his body. The arrival of the police marked the climax of the chaotic Christmas celebration. Chapter 45, a chaotic exit as the police intervened, tensions reached a breaking point. Mr. Joshua handled the situation, revealing that police visits were not unprecedented in the troubled history of the Grand Apartment. Susan, now armed with a police report, began packing my belongings, discussing with Mr. Douglas the logistics of my deposit and a refund for the remaining prepaid days of the month. Arguments flared between Susan and Mr. Douglas, and soon the other roommates joined the fray, expressing their disdain for my presence. Accusations and harsh words filled the air, painting a vivid picture of their resentment. In the midst of the chaos, as Susan finalized the packing, Craig approached with a venomous farewell, hope you both burn in hell. I responded with a terse, likewise, Merry Christmas. With those bitter words hanging in the air, Susan and I made our hasty exit from the Grand Apartment, leaving behind the wreckage of a Christmas celebration gone horribly awry. The chapter closed on a tumultuous note, promising a fresh start and the hope for a more harmonious living situation in the chapters yet to unfold.